The year 2002. The Serione Formation in Colombia, South America. Paleontologists from the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute are in the field, running yet another planned dig. In the coal mine, they discover the skeletons of two gigantic prehistoric animals. But the team's main discovery is something completely different. One of the scientists found another bone, quite an odd one. It was a vertebra five inches wide, eight times the width of the human and vertebra. The size of the bone meant that the discovered monster was absolutely humongous, and not only compared to us. The remains of giant animals found nearby were most likely its prey. Scientists estimate the predator to have weighed as much as a Volkswagen Golf. They think the beast to whom the vertebra belonged died millions of years ago. But what about the rest of the species? There are some questions scientists can't answer. Is it possible that this prehistoric monster could still exist today? You're looking at a typical coal mine, just like any other. But over 60 million years ago, it teemed with life. The coal here is essentially the fossils of plants and trees that grew in the planet's very first tropical forest. Scientists discovered it during excavation in the northern part of Colombia. On the face of it, it seems surprising that bulldozers and tractors just go on working at the mine now that Serione is a paleontology research site. Don't they risk damaging important specimens? It turns out it's in scientists' interests, and very much so. Fossils are usually hidden below coal seams. Large mining machines extract tons of coal and expose hundreds of square meters of materials that are actually important for research. So, miners and paleontologists work together, allowing us to learn about the flora and fauna of the Paleocene. In a nutshell, it was pretty much the same as in the modern-day tropics, except much larger. Take, for example, the discovered turtle, Serahonomies wayunaiki, that turned out to be the size of a smart car, with its shell at least a meter and a half long. Another example is Anthracosuchus balrogus, almost a five meter long crocodile, not so different in size from a Porsche. But the size of the unknown beast skeleton found by Carlos Jaramillo shocked the expedition crew. It was Jaramillo who found the very first vertebra of the prehistoric monster. And then the paleontologists found another vertebra. And after that, another one. And again, another one. They made a model of the complete skeleton and found that the animal could have around 250 vertebrae, which together made up a giant snake. This is the story of the discovery of the most giant snake to ever exist, Titanoboa. It was truly titanic, 13 meters long. It's almost like one and a half standard limousines. Besides, so far, paleontologists have found almost 30 Titanoboa skeletons, proving that 13 meters was a normal length for an adult snake. Although there might have existed even larger specimens, scientists believe the snake's impressive size directly depended on the temperature. The warmer the climate of the specimen's habitat, the larger its size. That's because smaller specimens can't endure overheating so well. Say, the Barbados thread snake, which is one of the smallest snakes existing today, doesn't grow any longer than 10.4 centimeters. It's just 2 centimeters longer than an average earthworm. The snake lives in the tropics, just like the gigantic Titanoboa did back in its day. The thing is, the tropics and Barbados are shaken by the everlasting cold winds coming in from the Atlantic Ocean. That's why snakes in the area are so small. Let's compare them to the largest existing snake, the anaconda. It inhabits the same warm parts of South America where Titanoboa once reigned. Anacondas can reach the length of 6 meters, which is quite a lot for a modern-day reptile, but still only half the size of the extinct giant snake from the hot Paleocene. Although scientists believe that the climate and temperature not only influenced Titanoboa's colossal size, but also played a role in its gradual extinction. 
Not long before Titanoboa came into existence, the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event destroyed 75% of species on the planet, including dinosaurs. This was a moment of drastic climatic change. Around 4.5 trillion tons of carbon ended up in the atmosphere and the ocean, causing a hotter climate on the planet. The average global temperature of the Paleocene was around 25 degrees Celsius. Compare this figure to the temperature in our time. In the aughts, it reached 14 and a half degrees. Such hot prehistoric weather led to a rich abundance of fauna, including of course potential prey of the hungry Titanoboa, which also was as comfortable as it could be in such an environment. It was the main predator, not only in South America, but basically on the entire planet. An adult snake could easily beat turtles weighing 100 kilos and swallow giant crocodiles. But this doesn't mean that the Titanoboa was not endangered. Crocodiles themselves might have been eating its eggs. Moreover, scientists believe that the giant snake's mating rituals were rather peculiar and dangerous for the species itself. Everything started with a fight between male Titanoboas to decide who would get to mate with the female that interested them. But the most curious thing about it was that after breeding with the winner, the female would kill her partner and eat him. And seven months later, little baby snakes would hatch. As you can see, even in its heyday, the species was pretty rare. Titanoboas could die even before they were born or perish fighting to reproduce. But scientists believe that the main cause of the snake's extinction was unexpected climate change. Toward the early Miocene, average global temperatures began to slow fall. For the thermophilic Titanoboa, a temperature of 12 degrees Celsius was catastrophically low. Large reptiles were gradually going extinct, with small snakes taking their place in the ecosystem. Besides, Titanoboa failed to get used to the new habitat. Tropical forests turned into pastures of sorts, and Titanoboa's prey faced either extinction or downsizing. Scientists believe that the snake died out because it was was unable to find food, and that is an odd assumption. I mean, how come the animal at the very top of the food chain, unrivaled in combat, went extinct due to mere changes in climate, unable to adapt? Although scientists claim Titanoboa became extinct a long time before humans emerged, tales of incredibly big snakes are part of many cultures, and legends aren't necessarily a product of imagination, but rather a hyperbolized vision of the world by our ancestors. The Old Testament contains several mentions of a sea monster that looked like a giant serpent. Leviathan was the embodiment of chaos, the devourer of souls cursed after death, the true king of all beasts. What's interesting is that most texts describe it as a real animal that people actually encountered. A similar monster cast terror into the hearts of Scandinavians. In their legends, Vikings often told stories of a powerful sea serpent that grew to be so enormous that it surrounded the earth and bit its own tail. Its name was Jormungandr. It appears on several pre-Christian and early Christian runestones and engravings. For example, a tale in which Thor, the god of thunder, tried to kill the enormous monster is engraved on an 11th century runestone. The stone is now exhibited in the National Museum of Denmark. Interestingly, the giant serpent could live in the Norwegian Sea, which is a marginal sea between the Arctic Ocean and the Scandinavian Peninsula. The warm Norwegian current flows through the sea, which is an extension of the Gulf Stream. Due to the current, the sea ice remains ice-free even in winter. That's a perfect layer for the thermophilic Titanoboa. It's no surprise that mentions of the snake are also found in the myths of the hot east. Such religions as Hinduism, Buddhism, and Jainism mention a giant serpent, the Naga. It's believed to live in caves, water bodies, on land, in water, or underground. But the most curious part is that we can still spot it today. In Thailand, people believe that the Naga hides in the Phu Langa National Park, 
Although time has turned it into a dreadful rock. Don't think it's just a tourist trap, though. No one bothered carving out every single scale out of stones. Some tourists think the giant rock could have been the Titanoboa that was fossilized in a volcanic eruption. Park representatives claim the gigantic snake rock actually consists of stones that cracked in the sunlight during over a hundred thousand years of their existence. Strikingly different day and night temperatures cause the rock to expand and shrink in turns, eventually cracking. Combined with water erosion, this resulted in a scale-like pattern on the gigantic snake rock. What's strange, though, is that there are no similar rocks nearby. Could it be that the temperatures only affected this particular rock? But apart from myths and legends, there's proof that Titanoboa exists as can be seen in the witness's video records. If you look closely, you'll see the shape of a snake swimming in the murky water. It takes a lot of time for its tail to disappear from view, which suggests that this reptile is bigger than an anaconda. This photo, on the other hand, was taken not by casual passers-by, but by personnel of the US CIA in 1959. The agents were flying in a chopper over the Republic of Congo in Africa. Africa. Suddenly, they noticed a strange object. It was a snake that supposedly reached a length of 59 meters. This by far exceeds the length of the Titanoboa skeletons found by scientists. The enormous snake was spotted even where it wasn't supposed to be. The video shows a snake of an unthinkable size creeping on a roof of a house in Samara, a city in the southeast of Russia, although the climate in this region is not at all warm. And in Brazil, a courageous fisherman even tried to catch the giant snake with his bare hands. You can see that the reptiles captured on camera are much bigger than the anaconda. But how could Titanoboa exist in our time? Remains only are not enough for scientists to fully describe an extinct animal in great detail, including all its habits and features. So it's not impossible that Titanoboa could have an aptitude for stasis, which paleontologists might have just overlooked. This is the ability of some living organisms to put their lives on hold, so to speak. Their heart rate decreases, their breathing slows, and their body temperature drops. Such hibernation allows animals to survive harsh winters, droughts, lack of food, and other extreme conditions. And stasis is observed in some species of snakes as well. For example, common garter snakes hibernate from the onset of cold weather in late October until April. These snakes spend their stasis in small underground caves. What if millions of years ago, on the verge of extinction because of the cold, Titanoboa went into the same kind of sleep, hiding underground? This begs the question, when, and most importantly, where will it wake up? Paleontologist Carlos Jaramillo, who was the first to discover Titanoboa, believes that the likelihood of the giant reptile's return is quite high, although this can only happen if the global temperature rises, and no earlier than in a million years. But no one could imagine that global warming would be escalating so quickly and that the scientists' assumptions could come true right now. The scientists' major interviews took place 10 years ago after the Titanoboa skeleton was found. While back then, the average global temperature was still unsuitable for Titanoboa's comfortable existence, global warming in recent years has changed the situation dramatically. Now, the average annual temperature in equatorial regions is around 31 degrees Celsius, which is even higher than the average global temperature in the Paleocene. If Titanoboa was really asleep all this time, this is the best moment for it to emerge from its sleep, although it might have done it already. Various news outlets in warm countries have covered suspicious cases that might indicate that the giant snake has been awake for a long time. For instance, India Water Portal has an article about the mysterious disappearance of fish in large quantities. Fisherman Jaman Ram, who lives in the North Indian state of Uttarakhand, recalls that when he went fishing in the river Ramganga before, he could catch around 100 kilograms of fish per day. It isn't possible anymore. Freshwater biodiversity in India started plummeting. 
populations of large migratory fish plunged a staggering 94%. Locals blame it on pollution, mining, and overfishing. But what if fish in Indian waters are prey for something else? The climate in India is quite favorable to giant reptiles. News feeds in the country often feature reports of giant snakes trying to swallow a whole deer or blocking pedestrians' way right in a city. It's not unlikely that the environment would also suit a more enormous snake, that is, Titanoboa. Besides, scientists believe that fish constituted a major part of Titanoboa's diet. What brought them to this conclusion was the snake's palate and the number and anatomy of its teeth. Of course, most species of fish the prehistoric monsters feasted on went extinct or became smaller. So if Titanobo was still alive, it would need to catch much more fish. But that's not the scariest part. As you already know, when this snake wanted a hearty meal, it hunted down giant crocodiles too. But what would Titanobo eat if it was alive today? Well, us, of course. A prehistoric crocodile found in the Serion Formation, which was Titanoboa's prey, weighed as much as 410 kilos. To get that much meat, Titanoboa would have to devour about seven people. This shines a different light on the horrifying missing person statistics. One example is British Columbia. In recent years, Canada's westernmost province has witnessed a disproportionately high number of missing persons cases. Almost 12,500 people went missing in 2020 alone. And even though the figure in British Columbia still exceeds the national average, Average, there's still no clear consensus on why this is so. Granted, North America is not really the America in which scientists say Titanoboa lived, but its remains are a relatively recent discovery, which is yet to be studied deeper. This means Titanoboa's habitat could be much larger, although we don't know about it yet. Besides, another clue suggests that the reason for those people's disappearance may actually be this reptile. The pins on this map mark the places where unidentified human remains were found. This is just a small number of missing persons found, albeit dead. You can notice they're all along the shoreline. But how could so many people fall victim to Titanoboa? After all, the colossal predator shouldn't be hard to spot. It might be its special hunting technique, which helped the beast get food back in prehistoric times. A boa in its form, Titanoboa hunted like a crocodile. Apparently, today it also waits for prey in hiding, partially submerged in water. It knows how to hold its breath. The snake's color makes it inconspicuous, so its victims might not have noticed it at all or mistaken it for seaweed. When the snake's potential snack is finally within its reach, Titanoboa charges at it suddenly. Then, with its massive jaw, it bites the prey's neck. This prevents the wounded victim from fleeing. Then, Titanoboa Titanoboa coils around the body and proceeds with strangling its prey. This reptile's crush force is over 180 kilos per 6.4 square centimeters. Put simply, it's the pressure that would be exerted on a human if they were trapped under a load that weighs like one and a half Brooklyn bridges. When its victim is completely defeated, Titanoboa swallows it whole. It doesn't even need to chew. Then, a long process of digestion follows. Our bones consist of calcium phosphate and other salts. They're insoluble in water, but dissolve in hydrochloric acid, which is present in a fairly high concentration in the snake's stomach juice. When it's done, it'll be as if you went missing. Unfortunately, paleontologists make conclusions about the appearance and behavior of an extinct animal only from a pile of crumbling bones, which means they can get all too many things wrong. But we can't just sit around waiting until experts look into the videos of Titanoboa-like snakes or the police deal with the abnormally frequent disappearances. So, if you live near the water and start to notice strange tracks on the sand, suspicious-looking seaweed, or weird ripples on the water, beware.